So I was a teacher and I was teaching very low achieving students and I discovered that if I found an audience for my students, it got them very excited. So I connected with some other teachers and we created a network which we called the Free Educational Mail Network or Fed Mail Network. And that allowed teachers to connect and share their student writing with one another. Then I dis we discovered that we needed something to sort of a matchmaking program. Um, so if teachers wanted to collaborate with one another, how would they find one another? So we created something we called the Projects Registry. And you were able to register a project if you were looking for a partner, and you would register it by subject matter or technology type or collaboration type or geographic area, and you would put your project in there and that would go out to hundreds and sometimes thousands of teachers and let them know, we called it a call for collaboration, let them know you were looking for partners. And then the third project that really um, uh, w just took in all the aspects of the internet was something called CyberFair. And back in 1996, we were asked to create the ultimate collaborative project that could happen online. And we designed something that was similar to a World's Fair, but it took place online. And it was like a virtual World's Fair. And we designed eight different units, community-based units, local history, local environment, local leaders, art, music, sports, that kind of a thing. And the students went out into their community, they took photographs, they took videos, and they created virtual exhibits about their community. Then they shared them online. And we had schools from 105 countries that participated, and they got to learn about different places around the world that they uh, may never visit through this project. And we're celebrating our 22nd year of Cyber Fair. Initially, it was the technology. Schools were not connected. They didn't have computers. They didn't have internet connections. So it took a while. We had this idea of connecting teachers, but many schools were not connected. Once they were connected, then they weren't trained. And they didn't, they, there weren't, um, projects with structure that would help them understand how they could participate. And many teachers, when they thought about connecting, the first thing that came to mind was pen pal. So we needed to move them from the pen pal mentality to deeper learning and, and deeper collaboration and, and teamwork and, and building projects around science or social studies or language arts or diplomacy or service learning, all of these things. The biggest impact happened in 1992, we were contacted by the National Science Foundation and asked if we wanted to include live internet video conferencing as part of an art educational project. And that didn't exist back then. And it was based on the fact that for 10 years prior, we had been doing collaborative learning online. And they said to us, um, well, how would you like to add this component of live video? And we'd like to uh, include a school in Tennessee, because that's where Al Gore is from, and a school in Washington, DC, because that's wh where we are, and a school in London, because we want to show that it is, it, it's global. And um, I said, sure, we'd love to do that, but you also have to include a school in California, because that's where I'm from. And so we created an environmental study the students worked together, and even though we had been doing collaboration for 10 years, people didn't get it until they actually saw the video of the students working together. And suddenly, people from all over the world wanted to come and learn about how you could use the internet to collaborate. Early on, um, th you can't do this by yourself. So I found others that believed in this idea of uh, social learning, collaborative learning. And uh, I connected with a teacher, Al Rogers, who was in a different school district. And he and I just thought this was the most wonderful thing. And we started working together to build activities, to build networks. And, but we were in education, so we, th that part was covered. I then connected with Susan Estrada and Steve Wolf and Don Mitchell, all who were tech technology people and internet people, and they really believed in using the internet to support learning. So bringing those two components together, the technical part and the education part, made for a really powerful program. So my hopes 
for the for the internet is that we will actually use it for more substantial problem solving and problem preventing and future thinking and that will involve young people from the very earliest ages and give them the tools they need to understand how to work collaboratively, work in teams, share knowledge, and, and address real issues. So more authentic learning, more uh, practical applications. My biggest fear is that um, the internet is sort of taking a, a, a turn in the wrong direction and it's becoming an unfriendly place to learn because there's ads that are popping up every five minutes and our, um, <clears throat> our privacy is at risk. And so whereas people could be using this to talk about certain things, they're becoming less and less uh, likely to do so because they're afraid that, you know, they're, that their information is going to be sold and it's a commodity. I think what we can do today is to take the lessons that we've learned from the people that have been doing this for a long time and more widely distribute that knowledge and that experience. Um, this is not something that you can learn overnight. So uh, it's been very iterative as we've learned what works and what doesn't. So we need people that are doing good things with the internet, young people and, and anybody that's doing good things with, with the internet. We need the support to get the word out and, and create those models that others can find, can, can follow. They need to be able to, they, they need models and they need uh, sort of like recipes that they can follow if I want to use the internet to help my community do this or help them with environmental issues or human rights issues or, you know, uh, have an art fair on the internet. How do we do it? So uh, it, it needs to be done in a way that it, again, it's not tied to, is this going to make us money? So it really needs to be, this is, this is purely educational. We want to share this, these models and information with the rest of the world. So my biggest advice is to form intergenerational, intercultural teams to work on whatever the, the project is together. So if it's um, creating uh, entertaining video, it would be great to have an intergenerational team. If it's looking at environmental issues, it would be wonderful to, ha to know what are the things that are affecting young people or, or young people are interested in, but also bringing in the experience of people that have been around for uh, a long time and have learned. And um, the young people will become our future business leaders, decision makers, community leaders, um, and eventually they won't be young either. So they want to bring. It. So it's sort of a cycle. So I really uh, I feel very strongly of having having these intergenerational, intercultural teams. So what surprised me the most is that it's sort of taking uh, a little bit of a uh, downward, scary uh, turn. And um, whereas the internet was this hope that people would get together and share research and collaborate and work together and support one another, um, now there's this undercurrent, this dark internet where it's being used for uh, not positive things, things that are not going to improve the quality of life of anybody and, and hurtful things. And um, I mean, there's always going to be that element, but I am surprised that this has been allowed to, to fester in the way that it has.